This part of the service has been set aside to recognize you in ministry for what God has called you to do and what he has already started doing in your life. For the sake of everybody here, I'll read a couple scriptures so that we can lay some foundation concerning what this time is all about. If you would go with me to the book of Numbers, chapter number 11. Verse number 16 and 17. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and officers over them, and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. And I will come down and talk to thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bear it not thyself alone. Today represents something very special, Elder, because I've done just that. I've appointed you and placed you in a position in this vision where now you are able to share the burden with me. First Timothy chapter number five, verse number twenty-two. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. I have not done this hastily. I have not done this suddenly. But I've had a chance to watch you in and out of ministry for over 10 years. And it gives me great honor to fulfill the scripture today concerning you and being set apart for the use of the kingdom. Second Timothy. Chapter number one, verse number six. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Elder, when we lay hands on you today, we fully anticipate that every gift that God has given you, that may even be dormant and may not be alive, that it will be stirred up and will allow you to participate in the advance of the kingdom of God at all costs. Second Timothy, chapter number two, verse number 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Elder, it is your obligation to preach the uncompromised gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth people's lives depend on. The Bible says man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Titus, chapter number one, verse number five. For this cause, left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city, as I have appointed thee. At this time, Elder, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. With every question, your answer should be, I do the Lord being my helper. Thank you. 
Do you accept the Bible as God's inspired, infallible, inerrant, immutable, indestructible, and indispensable word? I do the Lord be my helper. Do you understand the requirements, responsibilities, and realities that are about to be placed upon you by being ordained and set apart as an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you ready and willing to accept and assume the responsibility to pursue, preach, and practice God's word with boldness? To minister to the needs of those whom you are sent without partiality. And to give yourself sacrificially and without reserve to the educating, edification, and equipping of the body of Christ. Will you endeavor to be diligent in the study of God's word? Instant and faithful in prayer. An example in Christian piety discipline before your people and the community in order that your life may be a worthy Christian example and that upon your ministry the blessing of God may rest. Recognizing the sacred responsibility of your call and aware of your own human weakness will you seek the leadership and empowerment of the Holy Spirit in order that you may be a faithful minister of him who has called you. At this time, Bishop Mosley will render your charge. The charge is a standard, traditional one that's given in and from the Word of God. Second Timothy, the fifth chapter, read some verses and then I will extend the word of God to you. You are to extend your hands to touch the Bible as an affirmation and as a confirmation of the fact that I will by the grace and the help of God, I will accept this charge. And I've known you for 20 years or better. Uh, I met you when you were around 17 years of age. Uh, I was used of God to groom you and also to license you. And you've preached for nearly 20 years plus, 24 years, give or take a year or two. So you're not a novice. And we're not to, to um, lay hands as pastor has said, suddenly on no man. So he says in the word, I charge you, therefore, before God, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. And the charge will be to preach the word, to be instant in season, out of season, to reprove, to rebuke, exhort with all long suffering of doctrine. At this time, we're going to anoint your head with oil. First Samuel, chapter number 16, introduces us to a text where it was time for a new king to be anointed. And in the process, 